Praise the Lord, saints. Good evening, good evening. Once again, I thank the Lord God for another blessed day, another midweek uh, Bible study lesson. Uh, we come to you once again from the Greater Galilee Missionary Baptist Church. We are so honored under the leadership of our pastor, Pastor J.J. Richardson Sr., uh, for another opportunity just to fellowship. Once and yes, we are, brothers and sisters, uh, still continuing this um, uh, pandemic and, and, and social distance, um, doing it our midweek Bible study by way of virtual uh, fellowship. <laughs> mm -hmm. I tell you that that's a that's a strange thing to say, but nevertheless, here we are, Amen. And we making making do with what God has provided, Amen. This evening, I uh, I have my wife. Uh, Sister Molden, she's accompanying me. I tell you, I felt a little lonely a few weeks ago <laughs> without her. And I just thank the Lord God that he allowed us to uh, uh, have this midweek Bible study uh, fellowship with you all this evening. Uh, at this time, we're going to uh, ask uh, Sister Molden if she would do our scripture lesson reading. And after she do the scripture lesson reading, we're going to have a word of prayer because uh, from this lesson, uh, even with last week's lesson, brothers and sisters, it ties in. So uh, we're going to ask the Lord God to just bless our minds, to be attentive to what will be shared this evening. And, and as we fellowship in God's word, for those of you that have, are tuning in, uh, that, that give, your, give your comments down there in the chat session. <laughs> Amen. To let us know that you are. Uh, 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 tuned in this evening. Amen. And, and we just thank you for uh, your fellowship once again. Uh, Sister Molden, if you will, at this time, do our scripture lesson reading. Then we're going to have a word of prayer. Amen. The title of our lesson is Meeting the Needs of Others. And our scripture that we'll be reading from is from Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. Amen. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves. And he said, He that showed him mercy on him, then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. Amen. Join with me, brothers and sisters. Eternal God, our Father, we bow at this moment to say thank you for another blessed opportunity to fellowship in your word this evening. And as we, Lord God, are here, we, we are forever, Lord, acknowledging you as being sovereign, that in spite of what we are facing, Lord God, in this season, we know that you are, you are in charge. And as we fellowship in your word today, Father, we continue to uh, acknowledge you and asking for your uh, direction and guidance as we discuss your word, Lord God, and for all those that are tuning in, may they receive, Lord God, your word of wisdom and instruction, Lord God, and direction to help us, Lord, be the people you have called us to be 
in these days. We thank you again for another blessed opportunity, and may you be glorified in all that we do and say this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> well, bless the Lord, saints. Uh, thank you, Sister Molden, for uh, that scripture uh, lesson reading. Uh, yes, we are talking this evening about meeting the needs of others. You know what? On last week, uh, I was uh, honored uh, to set in with my pastor, and I, I was very uh, grateful for that and humbled because um, uh, under the leadership of our pastor, uh, I'm continually learning uh, how God uh, uh, is using his leaders and, his, and those that God has appointed as shepherd over his flock uh, to uh, be the mentor and, and, and teach and train and, and give an opportunity to those that God places under his tutorage to uh, uh, be trained in a way that you would be able to uh, present God's word before the people. And I am very grateful to the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. I often, uh, you know, tease and, and, and meddle with my wife and told her, tell her that I've been shaping and molding on her for years and, 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 she, and she's still learning. But that's a tease, you know. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. And, um, but I'm learning under his leadership, the, one of the important rules of, of learning how to receive and, and, and be humble uh, when it comes time for uh, learning and being trained and how valuable that is. Our last week lesson, as I discussed uh, with my pastor, uh, it had to do with overcoming uh, self interest, mm -hmm. all right? And our, this week's lesson has to do with meeting the needs of others and how this lesson ties in, brothers and sisters, the Lord Jesus Christ being our, our ultimate uh, 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 mentor and, and, and leader and teacher. Uh, Jesus taught many lessons to his disciples and, and getting them prepared as, as my pastor, he's, he prepares all those that comes under his leadership. Jesus, he, he preparing his disciples, amen, knowing that one day uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, he would depart from them and he was getting them prepared for, for the future, amen, because they were facing many obstacles as they were students under his leadership and knowing that the day would come that they would have to do what Jesus did. And as Jesus taught them and said to them one day, greater works than these shall you do. Amen. And so this evening, we want to look at this lesson, brothers and sisters, and see how it applies to us and how we can use these principles to help us be the people that God is calling us to be in these days. Amen. Meeting the needs of others. As Sister Molden read our scripture lesson, I want to just uh, read this to you to help us understand why this lesson really matters, you know, because you think about selfishness and selfish desires, you know, self-gratification and self-interest. Uh, those attitudes are highly, you know, valued in our time. If you look around our nation, our cities, our communities, brothers and sisters, Sad to say, people are selfish. People, everybody's thinking on themselves, and and the question is, you know, how can how can we become better neighbors to one another? Mm -hmm. You know, during times like these, you know, social distance, you know, and 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 during this pandemic, how can we uh, meet the needs of others? How can we? And Jesus gives us a challenge. He Challenges us to address the needs and welfare of everyone, amen, including uh, those that, that we perceive as our enemies, amen? amen. I tell you, that's a lesson that, that uh, is ongoing <laughs> when you come to think about how you should approach and, and address the, the issues of those that you know are your opposers, amen, <laughs> your antagonizers, amen. And the Lord Jesus, from our last week lesson, even as today, he's going to uh, paint the picture ever so clearly to us to let us know this is how you address, address these matters. Amen? Amen. And as we look 
And our lesson in focus, brothers and sisters, it says that a beautiful gospel uh, ballad is, was recorded by uh, the gospel of Cliff. It says that was a request for God to open our eyes. Amen. It titled says, so we can see how to follow him. That in following him, the lyrics, it further requested that uh, dissension among humankind cease and the tendency to hurt our to hurt one another be removed. And this is an appropriate prayer uh, for followers of Christ. Amen. Especially in terms of our tendencies to be blinded to the needs of others who are uh, economically and racially and culturally and religiously different. I think that's one of our crippling uh, dilemmas that when we find ourselves, brothers and sisters, being judgmental uh, uh, and and marginalizing others when it comes to uh, spreading the message of the gospel, when it comes to loving one another, uh, we differentiate. Uh, okay, we don't we don't have an open heart to uh, reach out to everyone, as the scripture says concerning God's love towards uh, mankind. Says, for God so loved the world. Amen. Not just a few, but all. Amen. And so that that is a challenge that the Lord Jesus Christ has placed before us as God's people, as followers of Christ. And the Lord, he calls his church in these days and times, uh, including us in this great command uh, to love our neighbors as ourselves, to love our neighbors as ourselves. And he requests. His, his concept uh, of neighbor, when you think about neighbor, Sister Molden, when you think about neighbor, it says that it is limited to the person next door, isn't it? No. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, you know, that's how we think today, you know. We <laughs> think that our neighbor is just those that's close to us, those that we're familiar with. So when we find ourselves going out in public, you know, it seems like our mouths, it, 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 it cleaves to the roof of our our tongue rather cleaves to the roof of our mouth, and we we don't uh, say much to people. And I think that one of the things that also during this season that we're in, and I think we as God's people have to be very prayerful about that during these times of not allowing this 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 atmosphere and this culture that we are uh, facing right now concerning social distancing distancing uh, to keep us from uh, spreading the message of the gospel. Amen. Uh, and, and, and reaching out to those that are in need. Just think about it. Just think about it. You know, I, I drive down the road, brothers and sisters, and I come to different uh, intersections and stop signs and traffic lights. And in and, and our culture and our society that we live in, we have those uh, uh, that are called panhandlers, you know, okay? And, and, and they, you see them up there with signs and, 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 and we'll work for food or homeless or uh, 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 my family needs food or uh, whatever the case may be. And, and we as God's people, you know, we, we are to go out and show love to our fellow man, to love our neighbor as scripture teaches us, to love our, as we love ourselves. And the question is, so how do we? And who, we, who would really be our neighbor? Is it, is it that individual that's standing on the side of the state? You know, is it that individual that's holding up that sign saying, uh, 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 need help? Well, uh, as we look at our lesson uh, this evening, we're going to see that uh, we as God's people in the example that Jesus Christ set for us, we're going to see that the Lord God shows us how to approach situations when uh, there are those that uh, might find themselves uh, uh, disparate and, and, and needing help. Uh, mm -hmm. The enemy, I'm really seeing now that the enemy uh, is causing we as God's people to uh, be reluctant in, in helping one another uh, because the enemy can... can uh, uh, Cause what we uh, proclaim to be faith is really fear. All right? And so as we get further into our lesson, we're going to realize that the Lord Jesus says that uh, all those that 
you come into contact with, they are your neighbor. Amen? Amen. Amen. Look at this, Sister Mona, if you would. Uh, what do you think about that? that? That insight in our lesson. What do you think about that as you read that? Uh, because I think that as we get a little further in our lesson, we're gonna, it's going to help us uh, because I, I, I'm trying to, as we look at our lesson, to articulate it in a way that we can receive it because, brothers and sisters, we, we're up against some things right now. Mm -hmm. um, I thank God for our our uh, videographer uh, uh, doing this, these virtual uh, encounters that we're having to present God's word to, to you all. Mm -hmm. um, yes, God's word is getting out. Amen. But I also want to say this, as, as Sister Mona get ready to share with us about insight, is that we must not uh, stop here. Amen. Because God is going to bring some people uh, in your realm of influence. And I don't want us as God's people to uh, find ourselves like some of these characters that we're going to cover in our lesson. Uh, fell into minister to the needs of those uh, that are reaching out, that are in need of help. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and read this. <clears throat> the parable of the Good Samaritan presents important challenges to Christ's followers. Yes. The lawyer's testing of Jesus with his questions should remind us of two specific things. One is the danger of being students of the word without accepting the responsibility mm -hmm. of doing what it says. Mm -hmm. Second, the ministry of meeting the needs of others has no geographical, cultural, racial, or religious barriers. Anyone we become aware of with a specific need is our neighbor. Mm. And where possible and contextually appropriate, we are to seek to meet their needs. This familiar parable, unique to Luke's gospel record, also illustrates the fact that God's standards cannot be watered down or compartmentalized by attempting to justify our actions mm -hmm. or the lack thereof when confronted by his word. Finally, this parable challenges us to avoid allowing church busyness to blind us or desensitize us to our responsibility to meet the needs as a primary priority as followers of Christ. Amen. What do you think about this, Sister Molden? I have a lot. Well. <laughs> I know you do. Right. Um, <laughs> the thing that comes to my mind, but it's a lot of this is going to be touched on in the lesson. Yes, so. Uh, in, instead of going on to talk about the insights of this uh, parable, I would, I would rather we just go ahead and let the lesson talk for us. Amen, amen. amen. So we, uh, because a lot of this is, is going to be reinstated yes, in our is. minds and hearts as we go through this lesson. And so as Sister Molden shared with us, brothers and sisters, it, it, it brought it out very clearly that Jesus lets us know who our neighbor really is. Amen. It says on a little further, it says that of several occasions Jesus, he encounters with people. The question of inheriting eternal life as this uh, lawyer approached him and asked him about uh, w uh, what he must do to inherit eternal life. And Jesus gives him that parable. The rich young ruler uh, question uh, in Matthew's may have been uh, sincere. It says, but he found Christ's demands more than he was willing to pay. Amen. And you have people like that. You have people like that that, that pose questions, but they are just doing it. Sometimes they're doing it uh, ignorantly in ignorance. Uh, uh, and sometimes they are doing it trying to entrap you. Uh, but the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing the hearts of all mankind, amen, he gave him what he really needed. Amen. That's another lesson for us to learn of how to how to approach and answer questions when people uh, uh, come at you. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so the lawyer he, who uh, raised the question in our lesson uh, was not sincere and used it as a as we stated as a ploy to uh, entrap Jesus. <laughs> and so Jesus, he responded by posing two questions. Amen. That forced this expert in the law back to it. Amen. It says, knowing the letter of the law, but not the spirit of it. Uh, this, the lawyer, he, uh, he parroted back at, at Jesus, 
uh, by making this statement that he's been doing this ever since he was a child, <laughs> okay? And so he, he understood that the law w was spiritual. You know, he, if he had understood, rather, that the law was spiritual, uh, sometime, I believe, from our lesson, we will see that uh, in him posing that question and making that statement to Jesus, and Jesus responding back to him, uh, it's not just enough, brothers and sisters, to have a whole lot of head knowledge Amen. about what the Bible says, all right? Uh, we can know a lot about what the Bible tells us, instructs us to do, uh, but we as God's people, as the scripture says, uh, we must not only just be hearers of the word, amen, but doers, amen, the same. We must apply God's principles to our life, amen? amen. And so Jesus, he commanded the lawyer, he commanded, uh, excuse me, commended the lawyer's answer. Uh, and he was, he, okay, well, you, that's good, <laughs> okay? Uh, he commended the lawyer's answer by, by essentially telling him to, to act on what he knew, okay? If that's what you know, you do what you know, amen? And so the same like us today, we, we must follow through with what we have learned, amen? And his commendations was not an affirmation to, of righteousness uh, by works, uh, as the lawyer's question has suggested, because, brothers and sisters, we can't work to be saved. I tell them all the time, but you must, you must, uh, 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 be seen working. Why? Since you are saved. Amen. Uh, I said again that you can't, we can't work to be saved, but we must work since we are saved. Amen. And, but Jesus let the lawyer know that if you, uh, since you were telling me that you've been doing this and keeping these laws since you was, since you was a child, he says, I encourage you to continue in them. Amen. To do them, not just talk, talk them. Amen. And so uh, uh, it says here in our lesson, it continues uh, that eternal life is not an inherent inheritance uh, in the true sense of the word. Uh, inheritance is something someone else gains and leaves as a gift. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's received as the result, received as the results of a relationship and not a performance. I think sometimes people get confused get that confused when it comes to salvation, thinking that just because they do this, that, and the other, uh, uh, that God, that's why God uh, 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 saved them. Amen. That's why they are saved, and they lose focus on the fact that if it had not been for Jesus, amen, that there would be no salvation. There would be no salvation. And, mm -hmm. and I think along the line we get that confused but because of our good works, Amen, that we have obtained favor with God, and that's why he saved us. And I don't know, I think that's a deception of the enemy that messes up our minds as we go forward in our relationship, sidetracks us. And so the lawyer, he responded in, uh, his, his response to Jesus was intellectual and, and devoid of spiritual understanding uh, or the desire to apply it to his, his life. And I think sometimes we can... You know, get confused that we can become so intellectual with what the Bible says, Sister Bolden, versus uh, obeying the spirit, the spirit of the word itself. Amen. I think that uh, we can uh, have a lot of book knowledge. Yes. Amen. And not applying the principles uh, to our life. Amen. Amen. And so he recognized that to obey meant putting self behind to meet the most profound demands in the word of God. Amen. And that's a challenge. Amen. And that requires discipline on our part, brothers and sisters, that there is an inherent danger, brothers and sisters, in studying the word as an intellectual pursuit without seeking understanding, followed by obedience. Amen. Amen. We got to apply God's word to our life. Amen. I don't care how many, how many uh, uh, seminars and in seminary schools and, 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 and degrees that we may have and, and doctrinal degrees and, and, and master degrees when it comes to uh, theology. Brothers and sisters, all that's good and fine. As Jesus told the lawyer, good, <laughs> good. <laughs> but make sure that you are practicing what you preach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen? Make sure you're practicing what you preach. 
Amen. And so he went on to tell us that the expression we know more uh, uh, Bible than we practice. It says, uh, desire that the law, this lawyer and those who boast about their knowledge of the word uh, but show no visible evidence of having allowed it to transform their lives, uh, the word of God is living and is best represented by what I just stated doing. Amen. It has been said time and time again, brothers and sisters, um, people uh, don't mind uh, hearing what you say, but they prefer to see what you say. Amen. Amen. Uh, one of the statements that was made as I was growing up, uh, they would say that your actions speak louder than your words. Than your words. <laughs> Amen. What do you think about that, Sister Molder? Amen. Um, some of the things that came to my mind as while you were talking about uh, this this lawyer, this this guy that was well versed in his learning. A lot of times we, like you said, theologians. There are people who just go to school, go to school, go to school to acquire knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so, and a lot of times we get it confused that we we know that the Bible is a history book, mm -hmm. but it's also a book that is uh, put in place for inspiration, encouragement, and instruction. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's something to be desired, and it's something that we should understand about this particular history book, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. We don't learn this book just to pass the test. We learn this book to apply it to our lives so that we will have better and stronger lives and that we will know the desires of God's heart toward yes, us as his yes. people. I say it's more than just a recording of dates and events mm -hmm. like our regular history books are. Amen. And these are the words of God. These, these authors were inspired to write these words by God. Mm -hmm. And that makes a difference. And just knowing it, we need to be obedient to it as well. And we as uh, teachers and speakers, we have to be careful that we don't just emphasize the knowing and reading of God's word, mm -hmm. that we also emphasize the relationship that is required so for us to be properly in obedience to God's word. Right. Because the obedience is what's going to make the difference. And we should always know the word of God. And we should always, uh, and like, like during these times right now. Right. And we say it's not just about where you've been. It's about the relationship you're in, okay? Mm -hmm. Going to church every Sunday does not take the place of your required relationship with God as an individual. Amen. I'll and goodness. I believe that during these times, the Lord wants us to know it's not just enough to know his word. Mm -hmm. I want you to know me. I want you to spend more time knowing me. I said, because until you really seek out that time to know me, how are you going to know what to tell others about All right, me? all right. How are you going to encourage somebody else to have a relationship with me when our relationship is raggedy? He's given us time to get things earned out. He's given us time to, to reevaluate ourselves. He's given us time more than to just learn his word, but he wants us to get into the study. Amen. He wants us to learn his word, but he wants us to practice his word. So cool. He don't want us to just learn it. He wants us to practice it. He said when we obey the word, that's when it comes alive in our life. And it is proven. If anyone wants to test and prove the word of God, mm -hmm. just obey it. Amen. Give it a chance. That's right. And for our youth, I was, I was thinking we send our youth to school. Normally we send our youth to school, mm -hmm. okay, to learn what's written in their textbooks or what is electronic, you know, electronically given to them now as a curriculum. That's right. That's provided. We want them to, to you know, we want them to have that, and we want them to make good grades. We right. want them to pass the test. Mm -hmm. But we also expect them to be respectful to those who have authority over them. That's right. And we also want them to respect one another. And we want them to be obedient to the rules that are being put in place at that particular school. And we want them to, to follow the instructions of those who have authority of them as well as following the instructions that they have received of their parents as how they are to behave themselves while they're at school. Mm -hmm. They said by doing all these things, their foundation in life is made stronger and they're more prepared for the next level of learning. Okay? So you don't just go to school to learn what's in the books. That's right. You also practice self-discipline. Mm. And that's and you have to practice that. And that's why it's so important to us that we don't 
We said, we, we want you to get the grace, but we love it when you get that great conduct medal or you're recognized because you've been, you know, you have shown respect to the rules and, and you've made sure that you got mm -hmm. to, you know, sometimes they will recognize students, especially when you get a higher level That's of learning. Right. They recognize that you have, you're not being tardy for class. You're taking on their responsibility to have, your, mm -hmm. have everything with you that you need for that particular class. And these things, they are awarded, but these things prepare our children, our youth for life. Amen. For life. So that's something that I, that I had gathered from this, is that Amen. it's good for us as adults and teachers, but this is also a concept that is carried on through the daily lives of our children as well. That's true. Letting them know that it's not just about the book sense, it's about common sense mm -hmm. and having a sense of responsibility and having a sense of obedience and respect. Amen. So glad you shared that, Sister Molden, in reference to, uh, 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 and giving a shout out to our youth, amen, uh, here at Greater Galilee, because uh, uh, th that is a applicable uh, advice and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, insight and in, in, in addressing them, uh, because our youth, uh, they learn uh, much from uh, the schools and, and their and their cultural and uh, their society that they live in, their family setting. But do we want them from this lesson uh, to understand that uh, it is important for them, even as as young people, uh, to have and develop the right attitude of being able to uh, address uh, the needs of others and realizing that it's, it's, it surpasses more than what you just know, amen, that you have to apply, just like in school, you know, it doesn't matter how much you have, have uh, uh, read and, 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 and the knowledge information you have uh, attained from those books, but when it comes test time, amen, for all of us as God's people, there's a testing time, uh, when after we've done all of our training and been taught, uh, there's a testing time to prove what, you, what you've been been taught. Amen. And so Jesus, uh, he uh, applies this lesson uh, to his disciples and to let them know, because those that uh, a young man uh, wanted to know and the lawyer had posed this question to Jesus. Actually, as we go a little further, Jesus, he gives a parable. He, he didn't directly answer, you know, the, the, the lawyer. He, he gives a parable because he was wanting to convey a message, not just uh, to the lawyer, but for his disciples, as well as for us today, brothers and sisters, because he knew on up the, on up the road in the future, in 2020, <laughs> we're going to be faced with these same, same uh, uh, obstacles, these same uh, uh, opportunities concerning our neighbor, who is our neighbor. And so this lawyer, his intent when he posed that question to Jesus was to test and trap Jesus, okay? But he found himself trapped by his own question and response, all right? And that's, as I said, that's a good, a good lesson. And I'm always praying, Lord God, show me how to answer people that ask me a question of the reason and hope that, that you have placed within me, amen? And so he knew he had fallen short of doing what the law demanded of him, amen? Isn't that something? So, uh, character, his, so his characteristic of, of those who are unable to or have no desire uh, to complete or follow through on a task. They can do a lot of talking. Well, I think this, is, this ought to be done. I think this ought to be done. I, well, this is how I see it. But when it comes time for them to put their hands to the work, what is it? <laughs> well, what is it? You seen brother so-and-so, you seen so and so. -and -so. Well, they had a lot to say. <clears throat> and so here, Jesus, he let him talk, and then he let him know, hey, I hear what you're saying, but you need to be doing what you're talking about. And so here it says that who is our neighbor in this question that was posed from verse 29? Uh, the question verified that both his attitude and his understanding was wrong. All right. Apparently, he saw that the term neighbor meant more than a fellow Jew. The Jews 
concept of neighbor during this cultural time in Jesus' day was strictly limited and culturally and racially selective. Only a few Jews would have been given any consideration as being a neighbor. Mm, mm, mm. Jesus, he sized, he sized this opportunity, excuse me, he seized this opportunity uh, to teach whom he expected his followers to recognize and show mercy to as a neighbor. Listen to this. You see, he did not give a direct answer uh, to the question, but told a parable of a man traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho who was a coast, uh, who was accosted by thieves, beaten, robbed, and left for dead. Ironically, this man was most likely a Jew. The road from Jer Jerusalem to Jericho uh, was well known as a, 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 a hunt for thieves and robbers and was a fam was familiar setting for Jesus' audience. Listen, saints. Jesus, he introduced two representatives of the religious uh, hierarchy. Ha hierarchy a priest and a Levite who came by and saw the man but passed by on the other side and went their way. So why did they pass by the man and why are, are these too important to what Jesus was teaching? This is a lesson for us saints. Both of them may have uh, thought uh, the injured man was dead. That's possible. And they saw he passed by on the other side because, you know, coming into contact with the dead body uh, would uh, render the, them uh, ceremonially, ceremonially unclean, you know, religiously. According to the, uh, the book of Leviticus, chapter 21. And so they could also have feared becoming a victim to uh, uh, themselves. You know, maybe this man, he's faking. Maybe he's going to get up and rob me. <laughs> uh, I think that that kind of, uh, uh, you know, kind of touch home today. That many of, many of us have that kind of mindset. Oh, I ain't going to stop. They might try to rob me. Mm -hmm. You know, so we fail to help people or uh, did not want to uh, get involved. Uh, or wanted to guard their time for religious purposes. Oh, I ain't got no time for that. I got to get the Bible. I got to get the church. I ain't got no time for that. Uh, I'm busy. Mm -hmm. And so the, so the men uh, uh, were still guilty of sin because they, their own civil and ceremonial law provided for burying a dead body. Hmm. My, my, my. It says they deliberately neglected the heart of the law. I think that's that's key for us today because sometimes we can be so, try to be so biblically correct, we forget about the heart. the heart of what Jesus Christ was really teaching here about ministering and helping people, you know. Uh, these religious leaders re, uh, represented those who should set the standard for showing mercy to those in need, but instead uh, hid behind it as justification for their behavior. You know, under the leadership of our pastor, uh, we are taught and trained from uh, the unadulterated word of God when it comes to showing love and caring for people. And many people pose different questions about what should I do when it comes to uh, helping someone? What should I do when it comes to uh, taking care of my parents? What should I do because uh, uh, I gotta, I got to, I got to uh, 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 pay my tithes. I got to, I got to do this and do this and and and, and I want to just say this, brother, sister. God has order, and when it comes to God's order, don't let like this young lawyer. Don't let your 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 knowledge of what God's word say uh, hinder you uh, from the heart of what God's word is teaching when it comes to 
uh, ministering to the needs of people. Uh, you can become so uh, ceremonial and follow in the letters of the law and forget about the heart, the spirit of the law when it comes to caring for people. Mm -hmm. And I tell them pe people all the time when it comes to certain principles in the God's word, uh, maybe you need to do a reassessment because there are some areas in our lives that we are already out of order. And you need to reassess how to uh, uh, get things back in order so that you can be able to do what the Lord God has commanded us to do. And sometimes we try to uh, 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 neglect our responsibilities in one area of God's word uh, to try to do this. But actually, it, it has to do with our, our selfishness of not doing what the Lord told us to do in the first place. Amen? Amen. And so Jesus, he painted this picture to us that when he teach this, 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 this audience about who is their neighbor, he let them know that, hey, your neighbor is, is everyone. Amen. And so at the end of this lesson, he says, now, who do you think that, that, that ministered to uh, this young man that fell among thieves and left for dead? Uh, and here comes this Samaritan that ministers to them. Uh, I want to know from you all to make sure that you all got the, got the understanding of, of what I'm conveying. Tell me who was more neighbor to this person. Oh. And in their response, they said, Sister Molden, the one that ministered to the needs of the man. Yeah. And What's there's it? more there. That, mm -hmm. um, when I looked at this lesson, uh, and we look at the parable, we see that there are four men that God, that Jesus is referring to. Mm -hmm. But we see three men, they are carrying on life as usual. But there's this one man who has been stripped of his usual. Okay? His usual has been stripped from him. His security has been breached in such a way that it was obvious that he was left exposed, mm -hmm. embarrassed, and unable to change his situation on his own. He needed help, but he was half dead. Therefore, he was probably unable to cry out for help and probably too embarrassed by his unplanned and undesired circumstance to even try. His dignity was gone. Mm -hmm. His only real hope or chance of recovering from his state of being was for someone else to give him a helping hand. Amen. He needed a neighbor. He needed. He needed a neighbor. Uh, and here it comes, these, these men. Now, no one said that he couldn't see. So it's quite possible that he saw the <laughs> priest. He saw the Levite. And knowing their position as hierarchy, so, as it has been said, in the temple, he, was, he may have had some type of hope. But hope crossed the street and walked on by. Mm-hmm. And that's sad, my, my, my. but that is what happened to this man. And, and then that, that lets us know sometimes people know who we are. Mm -hmm. They've seen us going to church. They have a need, and they know that, you know, they can probably help me because they always at church. Every time I see them, <laughs> I, I live right across the street from the church. Wow. I see them every Sunday, every Wednesday night, sometimes during the week. They're <laughs> always at the church, and I'm right here. Amen. I'm right here. Surely, Amen. they're not just going to go on up to the steps of the church and leave me laying here, mm. exposed, obviously in need. My, my. So but, true. But yet, it happens. It happens. And say, so this was a tragedy, but the thing about it is what we don't understand or we don't, or we neglect to even try to come to uh, grasp with is that maybe yesterday or just a couple of hours ago, this man was doing the same thing that you was doing. Mm -hmm. He was going on with his everyday way of life, but then it was rudely and abruptly, abruptly interrupted. Amen. And he found himself in a place of need that he had never experienced before. The truth about it is, even though he's in a man, he is in despair right now, he's still a man. Amen. He's still a soul. And had you come along maybe an hour or two earlier, this could have been a different story. Oh, it could have my. been the priest laying down there, unrobed. Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of times we can tell who people are by what they wear. But this man was stripped of part of his identity. Mm -hmm. Stripped of part of his identity. And then here comes a man that's normally considered to be Amen. 
a level of the demons, a Samaritan. This man, I'm not even expecting him to help me, but he is the one. He is the one, the one that nobody really has the respect for. My man. The one that's unrespected comes and shows a great deal of care and respect for me in my place, mm -hmm. where I'm at right now, Amen. in my place of need. And he says that um, not only did the man get up, you know, come over there and, and interrupt his own travel. See, everybody got somewhere to go. Mm -hmm. Everybody's on their way somewhere. That's right. The priest has somewhere to go. The Levite has somewhere to go. The Good Samaritan has somewhere to go. And undoubtedly, the man that was laying there unable to go, he was on his way somewhere as well. But his trip got interrupted. The Good Samaritan... He could have kept going, too. Mm -hmm. There was nothing stopping him but his heart. He had a heart of compassion toward a perfect stranger, someone laying there in need, and all he wanted to do was help somebody in need. That's what a neighbor is about. Amen. He was a neighbor. So he takes off on himself to clean the wounds of the man. Mama. He did as much as he could right there on the spot for him. Because sometimes everything that you can do for a person is not right on the spot. Mm -hmm. They need further attention. Mm -hmm. So he even did that. Put him up on his beast. Now, he don't know this man, <laughs> but he knew he needed help. Amen. Put him on his beast, took him to the inn. Mm -hmm. Didn't take him over to the corner in the alley Amen. and try to minister to him. He took him to a place of security. The man had already suffers a traumatic experience. That's true. His security had been breached. He didn't feel safe. So he took him to a place where he would be safe. And not only did he take him there, he spent the night with him and took care of him. <laughs> they said he took care of this man. And on the morrow, he left the next day. Amen. He interrupted his trip for a whole night. Amen. To help somebody he didn't even know. That's a neighbor. Amen. And so we see here. That's a neighbor. And also, not only did he do that, but he did make sure that as he was leaving, that he, ha he still had somewhere to go, mm -hmm. somewhere to be. But he still wanted to make sure that the help that was needed for that person mm -hmm. did not end up on him leaving. Amen. He wanted that guy to be continuously helped. And so we see here uh, that the Samaritan, his actions... It mirrors the nature of Christ's, amen, kingdom. And one that crosses racial and uh, class and cultural boundaries. Uh, his actions also illustrate the importance of fulfilling the spirit of the law over uh, religious uh, legalism. Yeah. And so when asked which of the three uh, proved to be the man's neighbor, uh, the lawyer he identified the one who showed mercy. And so here Christ, he counted, he counters by commanding uh, the man as well as he commands us today, brothers and sisters, to go and consist consistently do the same. Amen? Amen? And so this parable solidifies the concept, brothers and sisters, that Christ follows, we as followers of Christ, mm -hmm. that we are expected to be neighbors to anyone uh, we may encounter or who may be in need. And so the ultimate example is Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because he was neighbor to us all. Mm -hmm. Amen. He, he extended his compassion, his mercy. Amen. Uh, towards us. And, uh, he, he pierced through all human, human boundaries. Amen. And cultures. And, amen. And he didn't leave no one out. He showed love towards uh, the whole world. Um, before we uh, close this moment, you have anything else you want to share? Yes, I was going to say, uh, well, when I thought about a good neighbor, I know in my old neighborhood, I was raised here in Little Rock on 13th Street. Uh, neighbors were <laughs> someone you could depend on to help you if you had a need. Mm -hmm. My mom was a widow for four years. Now, before my, my dad passed, Everybody knew each other in our neighborhood. So when he passed, the neighborhood embraced us, and they helped my mom. Mm -hmm. They helped her in watching us. They were, they were always there for her, and that's what a neighbor is about. And now that's, that's the, common, you know, the commonality to us mm -hmm. of what a neighbor is, but neighbors don't have to be that way. 
I mean, we moved to a different neighborhood, and we barely knew who lived next door to us. My, my, my. But in that neighborhood, we were, we didn't feel, when you're in, in, in the uh, atmosphere where you know that everybody around you is looking out for your good, mm -hmm. it's a good feeling. It and is. that's a neighborhood. Yes, for it is. That's what a neighborhood is supposed to be about. <laughs> okay, so, um, and for our youth, I had a thought. I said, there may be times when our youth are at school, you know, mm -hmm. and they see one of their peers struggling with something. Uh, maybe they're having a hard time understanding an assignment, mm -hmm. and you're not. Maybe you got it. You done got the assignment down, finished, and, and this one, will, you know, and you're ready to just sit there mm -hmm. really and wait for class to be over. But you have an opportunity to help someone, mm -hmm. and you should do it because you can, because you can. It doesn't have to be your buddy. It doesn't have to be someone that you'll even hang out with. But it's just somebody that needs help. So what we encourage our children to do is to show acts of kindness. This is being a neighbor. Even at school, you can be a neighbor, a mm -hmm. good neighbor. Uh, doing, uh, showing an act of kindness just because you can, it goes a long way with someone. Amen. Okay? It, um, you're giving your, what you're doing, you're able to give someone else understanding where the teacher may not have been able to do a one-on-one -on -one with them because they have a student, they got 25 students in their class and they're already helping another one, mm -hmm. but the other one is struggling and God has given you, little old you, you can be in the second grade, the seventh grade, or you can be a senior. Amen. And the opportunity for you to be a good neighbor to your peer or to your schoolmate may approach you in a way mm -hmm. where you can actually just Show them some kindness. And I encourage our youth to make sure that yes. you practice being a, a good neighbor. You could be, you're, you're, you're sitting right next to them, just like your neighbor, so to speak, lives right next door. So you are their neighbor. Yes. And it'd be a, it's a good practice that when you see someone that has a need, no matter who they are, no yes. matter what your relationship to them is or is not, you are to show mercy on them and compassion on them and help them in their time of need. Amen, amen, so true. Uh, Sister Molden, uh, you made the statement as we uh, get ready to close, brothers and sisters, uh, this evening. Uh, she made the statement that many don't even know their neighbor next door, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, as believers, you know, we must understand that helping others is our personal responsibility as God has commanded us. Uh, I'm, Striving to put in practice of, you know, I'm, to know everybody on my street. Mm -hmm. <laughs> amen, amen. And when there's an opportunity to, to do good, amen, do good, amen. Uh, speak to your neighbor. Uh, uh, when I was growing up, you know, everybody knew everybody. You know, and I'm striving to make it a good habit that in my neighborhood, if you move in, I'm going to come over there and, and greet you. I'm mm -hmm. coming over there to greet you and visit you, man or woman, because I want to know who you are. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. So I want to encourage us, brothers and sisters, let us, as Jesus taught his disciples, as well as he teaches us today, uh, let us learn how to show God's love towards everyone, to meet the needs of everyone, that no matter who they are, red, yellow, black, or blue, amen, <laughs> amen, we must learn to not differentiate, not be partial in our showing God's love. Our next week's lesson, brothers and sisters, um, will be coming out of the uh, book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And we have a devotional scripture reading, so I want to encourage you that as we get together on next week to do your devotional scripture reading out of Romans chapter 12, verse 9 to the 21st verse. Amen. And that from our lesson, we have a background scripture that's coming out of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27. Amen to the 14th chapter of verse 1. Amen. Our personal text, uh, print, printed text, excuse me, uh, is coming out of First Corinthians chapter 13. Uh, I think we're familiar with that one, talking about love. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 to the 13th verse. Mm -hmm. Our lesson entitled for next week will be the most excellent, excellent way. way. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God Amen. bless you, brothers and sisters. I pray and hope that you have received something from our lesson this evening. Amen. Meeting the needs of others until we meet again. Come to you from the Greater Galilee Missionary Baptist Church. We thank God for you. Stay prayerful. Stay safe. Let us pray. 
Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you this evening once again to fellowship in a virtual way with all of your people. And may your word, Lord God, and the principles thereof be applied to our life to be doers of your word and not just hearers, Father. Father, show us how to meet the needs of others as you show us your perfect way. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, saints. Thank you.